a blessed day to you all my sports to the bone people welcome back to the channel thank you all for tuning in this one is a jam pack show quite a few stories to touch on in this one now we see where cwi's president dr shallow he recently gave some information that they will be hosting a t20 tournament a domestic t20 tournament next year to find representatives for the 2028 Olympic Games. So gonna give you some info on that. We also see where Dwayne Bravo has announced that this year's CPL will be his final professional um, cricket tournament. We're also gonna be talking a little bit about England. You know, England, they are currently taking on Sri Lanka. We see where Joe Root, he just scored back to back centuries at Lords. You know, so Joe Root showing that he is indeed the man. And um, later on in the CPL, we have Trinibago Knight Riders taking on St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. So I will also be touching on that. So give a listening ear, bear with me until the end, and let me know what you all think in the comment section. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. We're giving you everything. <laughs> All right, so let us start off with this information about, um, you know, the T20 tournament that they're looking to put on next year. I am taking this from the Sportsmax website, so all credit goes to them. The headline says, CWI targets domestic T20 competition in 2025 to identify Caribbean representative, um, and in bracket, they have S representatives, for the 2028 Olympic Games. So before we go down into the um in the article, this can work one or two ways based on my limited knowledge about the Olympics. Right? Is either they are going to invite us and say yes, you know, you can, you all can send the West Indies as in, you know, players from different islands or this is the likely scenario. This is what I think is going to happen. They will have to send um a team, you know, so whether it's Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, Dominica, St. Lucia, whatever it is. So I am assuming this is why they are putting on the domestic um, tournament to try and find a winner. So that winner would go on to um, represent the region. That is why I think it's going to happen. Um, so let me go down into the article here now. Just let me give you a little bit of background information before we look at what Dr. Shallow said. So it says, Cricket West Indies President Dr. Shallow says plans are already afoot to host a domestic T20 competition next year to determine the Caribbean representatives for the 2028 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Right? So let us go down into what um, Shallow is saying now. This is Dr. Shallow and I quote, To add cricket to the agenda in the next Olympic Olympics is certainly going to be something tremendous as we did um so, tremendous let me say as we did in the commonwealth games a couple years ago when we had one of our teams representing the females we at the time chose our original women's tournament and the winner at that time was barbados so they were the ones that represented the region he went on to say we anticipate something similar will be done unless they tell us um you know unless they tell us all the teams can come and participate which would be ideal but it is unlikely for that to happen so obviously they're not gonna say all right everybody from the west indies can come you know they're not gonna say the west indies team in itself can come <laughs> they're gonna want um they're probably gonna provide spots for um a, you know one hour or so from from the region so you know um it's going to be very interesting to see how this uh t20 tournament goes you know, so let me just give you a bit more information um, from Shallow here. So he, he went on to say, we have, been discuss, um, we have been in discussion with CPL for them to fund a domestic T20 tournament starting next year. I think Miles Bascom and his team have already scheduled a window for next year in 2025. Once we are able to have that tournament, then we can use that to determine which team or teams will participate in the Olympics on behalf of CWI, in code for now. So as I said, my people, in that tournament, you know, whoever wins the tournament, they will probably go. Or if the Olympic committee says, listen, 
we can take two or three um, teams from your neck of the woods, then you know they will probably select the top two or top three um, teams that would have dominated that um, competition. You know, so um, let me just give you a bit more information here from Dr. Shallow, and I quote: "We can't use the CPL as it is now because it's um it's a franchise, but in the domestic tournament that we're having, which will still have a commercial model to it, but not um to the extent of CPL, but uh that will more likely be territories instead of franchise, so we will be able to identify teams." End quote, which makes a lot of sense. You wouldn't be able to go on you you would be able to use um cpl a franchise thing that with um with players from all over the world you know that so that can't work you understand all right moving on to Dwayne bravo Dwayne bravo Dwayne bravo the man who has all the records when he comes on to bowling in t20 cricket basically all the records now growing up in jamaica my friends and i you know when we used to play cricket Everybody wanted to be either a Bravo, a Shandopal, a Lara, a, a Gail, or a Sawan, you know? Um, I remember when we were going to primary school back in like 2006, you know, we were in about grade 6 them time there. Um, you know, people would, would take out some handbands, some of the youths they would even come with their, you know, the little squingy things that they, the girls used to catch up their ear, you know, trying to make... Um, wristband you know those things that bravo always put on his wrist to wipe sweat you understand so i remember people tying cloths and all of them sort of things around their hands around their wrist just to replicate what bravo um you know was wearing that's how popular his style was when he just entered the you know when he just entered the game he was dynamic in the field everybody was diving around jumping up and down and saying that they're doing bravo you know fun times um growing up there but um you know talking about all those accessories you know those was just a part of his thing but he you know he, he went on to dominate t20 cricket in terms of bowling you understand um and i tell you my viewers and subscribers he will definitely be missed you know when it comes on to um entertaining you know who can forget um all them dance champion and all of them sort of things that he he went on with so taking this from the wisdom cricket website it says Dwayne bravo announced his retirement from cricket with the um ongoing caribbean premier league uh his last professional outing right so that is what bravo is saying there a couple of days ago we, we we got shannon gabriel um announcing that you know he will he, he's hanging up his his, his boots so Dwayne Bravo is um, doing the same right now. Well, after this. So let me read a little bit. It says, arguably one of the greatest players in the format. Bravo announced his decision with a video on social media saying, I just want to ensure that um, last dance finishes at home. It's not about the wickets, the trophies, the success that I have. For me, what is important is that I want to remember. I want to be remembered as a good person um as a teammate and good human being end quote so doing bravo my viewers and subscribers hanging up his spikes well that he was spikes and hanging up his boots and his butt after this year's staging of the caribbean premier league as i said bravo he produced a whole lot of memories over the years you know people will remember him for playing that favorite shot inside out over cover for six people remember him for doing the champion dance you know but my um best memory of doing bravo is uh, i think it was a test match that we were playing him bowling to kevin peterson hit him hit him on the helmet the helmet fell off and you know went straight on the wicket and you know kevin peterson was dismissed that whenever i hear doing bravo that is the first thing that comes to comes to my mind as i said whole lot of memories out there um, if you're talking IPL, you're talking CPL, you're talking, um, you know, even the, 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 the Major League Cricket, whatever cricket you're talking about, international cricket, you understand, Dwayne Bravo um, really and truly lived to entertain when it comes on to, to, to cricket, you know, um, he, he also captained the West Indies, you know, uh, so he will definitely... He will definitely be missed out there on the field, you know. So shout out to Dwayne Bravo. All right, sliding on to um, see that we're talking about Dwayne Bravo, who is from Trinidad. Let's just talk about the CPL now, and then we'll finish off with Joe Root. So the CPL continues later on tonight.
Trinibago Knight Riders will be taking on the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. Always an interesting game. You know, I like to watch those two teams together because we know Evan Lewis is always going to want to um, get one over on his home country. Right, so uh, very, very interesting here. Now, going into this game, um, this is Trinidad, Trinibago Knight Riders' first game. So let me just remind you of their squad. Um, they have Jason Roy, Casey Carty, Kyron Pollard, who is the captain, Mark Dale. They have Shaquir Paris. They have Tim David, Andre Russell, Dwayne Bravo, Nathan Edward, Sunil um, Narayan. They have Andres Goss, Nicholas Poor, and Akil Hussein, Ali Khan, Jaden Seals, um, Joshua Little, Terence Hines, and Wakar um, Salamichael. So, very good squad here. Nice little mixture. Um, they have a couple of youngsters in. But, you know, first thing first, probably about four, five, six names will jump out at you straight away. You know, for what they have achieved at the international level and also at the franchise level. Talking about people like Russell and Bravo, you know, Pollard, um, Nicholas Poor and Hussein, you understand, Seals, all of these guys will definitely, Jason Roy, will definitely look to entertain um, in the CPL. Right, so they are looking, they are, they are going out there. Now, going into this game, um, it's going to be interesting to see the playing 11 that they select. You understand, as I said, it's a, it's a good, it's a good little squad here. Um, you know, I am looking forward to seeing Nicholas Puran doing some work for Trinibago Knight Riders. Um, don't know who they are going to open with, if they are going to open with Jason Roy and Sunil Narayan. That can, that, that is, that is a possibility. You know, but I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, uh, poor and continue his form. Mark Dale is another player that I, that I want to see. You know, every now and again, Mark Dale will come and give us some so a couple of good innings. And then, you know, we don't really hear much from him again. But very, very talented, um, talented player. He's probably going to open. You know, they have a couple of, hope that, couple of guys that can open. But, you know, for tonight's game, I am looking forward to seeing um, poor and Mark Dale, as I said, and um, hopefully Jaden Seals will get a game. So those are the guys that I, I, I really want to see. Obviously, you know, you're going to want to see what Bravo and Pollard and these guys will bring on Narayan. But, you know, I said, um, you know, we saw we saw Shamar Joseph in last night's game, you know, um, went for some runs. You know, Jaden Seals is, 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 is the next pacer that we, we definitely want to have a good tournament. You understand we know his caliber when he comes on to red ball cricket you know it would be nice to see him um doing well and for the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots you know last night yesterday I went through this squad so I probably don't need to go through the squad again but um yeah we're definitely looking forward to seeing uh I don't know if they are going to give Sheffield rather for that game but you know he's somebody that I want to see out there um Evan Lewis always good to watch him going up against Trinibago Knight Riders and Riley Russo, right? A very, very um, experienced player. You know, didn't come off for him in the first game, but you know, um, I think that he is going to hold the he holds the key whenever they are going up against um, established players like like the Trinidad Knight Riders um, would have. So, looking forward to those guys. All right, um, let us finish up here with England versus Sri Lanka. So England, they are leading Sri Lanka by 430 runs. Yes, <laughs> Sri Lanka, they need 430 runs to win. They have eight wickets in hand. So let me just go ahead and give you the, 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 um, the information here. So it's actually, this is at the end of day three. So two days to get that. Now England, 427 in their first innings. Sri Lanka got 196 in their first innings. England went back in, got 251. And, you know, Sri Lanka, they finished on 53 for two. So they have two days to go for that 430. Now, Joe Root, he's definitely the man so far getting back-to-back -back centuries. In the first innings, he got 143 from 206 deliveries. Um, we also saw Gus Atkinson bringing up his maiden um, test century, getting 118 from 115 deliveries. Some good hitting there from the, um, from the, from the pace bowler. Now, bowling for Sri Lanka in that first innings, they were led by Fernando, who picked up five for 102. Now, Sri Lanka batting um, in their first innings, they, 
didn't really do much the top scorer um nobody the top scorer was uh mendes getting 74 of 120 no one else was able to get over 25 runs now doing the damage for um england the wickets were actually shared chris Wokes got two gus atkinson got two Oli stone got two and matthew potts he picked up two now england in their second innings joe root again proved that he's definitely a tricky customer to deal with he scored 103 from 121 deliveries so very um quick century there and bowling for sri lanka in there um that second innings fernando three for 52 we also saw um a couple of other guys dry surya getting two and milan picking up two um kumara also got three wickets so that is how it's going um so far as i said sri lanka chasing um that target of 483 they finished on 53 for two now so far the wicket takers for england Oli stone and gus atkinson picking up a wicket apiece um sri lanka they are definitely um up against it in this one you understand so we 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 await day four to see if England will be able to wrap it up or Sri Lanka will bat out the day. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this one. Let me just say later on tonight, we will be live again to do a watch along. Probably won't be able to start um, at seven o'clock, you know, but we will be on hopefully around about 8, 8, 15. They're about to um, take you through the rest of the game. Big up on yourself, stay safe.